Hey guys, I'm Seb from Workbench, and today we're going to talk about the power of Vertex Maps. This week we're going to go over building some Vertex Maps and what we can use those Vertex Maps for. I created two examples, one simple and one a bit more complicated that builds on the first one. Alright, let's get started. In this setup, I'm using a Vertex Map to control where my displacement is happening on the object. Let me show you how this setup works. Let's start with a polygon object, and then I'm going to go to Select, Set Vertex Weight, set that to zero, or it'll turn the entire object red. Then I'm going to select my Vertex Weight, I'll double click that, and it'll give you a bunch of paint tools. And then you can just paint the area that you want to use. And then I'll grab Deformer, Displacer. I'm going to make that the child of the polygon object. I'm going to create, in the shading tab, I'm just going to create a simple noise. And you can see that it's displacing the entire object. So how we limit where the displacer is working is by adding a restriction tag. So you go to Tags, Cinema 4D Tags, and then Restriction Tag. And then in the Restriction Tag, you drag your vertex map. So now you can see that the displacement is only happening where we painted in our vertex map. And I can show you, actually, where it's live. That's cool, but we can make it more interesting. So I'm going to delete this vertex map off of here. And we're going to do the same thing. Select the polygon object. Go to Select, Set Vertex Weight, set it to zero. Then I'm going to create a Pose Morph by going to Character Tags and do Pose Morph. And then I'm going to select Maps. Now by default, it knows to use the vertex map as your base pose. I'm just going to lock this in this window. I'm going to select the vertex map, and then I'm going to paint the area that I want to use as my selection. Now I'm going to test that this is working by going down here where it says strength and just scrubbing it. Now I think that's cool, but it's happening to the entire object and I think it'd be more interesting if we were able to animate it from one side to the other. So how you do that is you select your pose morph, we go back to deformers and grab a morph deformer. That also has to be a child. And then in the morph deformer, if I unlock this, in the morph deformer, you'll have a setup for fall off. You have to make sure that your pose morph goes in here. Let me just drag it in there. There it is. Let me just make sure that it's working. It is. So now we're going to set up a fall off. I'm just going to use linear for right now. And here's our linear fall off. And if I pull it down, and it's not working. Well, the reason it's not working is I forgot to turn on animate inside of the pose morph. And if I turn on animate inside of the pose morph, it's still not working. And that's because how the deformers are stacked. And that one has to be at the very top in order to control all the deformers below it. So there's your deformer right there. And we, you could very easily animate that and get a pretty interesting effect. Now the cool thing about this is that you can also use a shader in conjunction with this. So you can take your vertex map and have it shade a different color in that particular area that you're deforming. Let me show you how to set that up. So if you go to alpha channel, now you can put this in any any channel, but in, in our case, I just want to limit the area that this particular shader is showing. So you go to texture, then you go to effects, and you go to vertex map. Now make sure that you have this set to soft, but you don't have it set to image alpha. There is no image alpha. Then you're going to click on that, and then you're going to drag your vertex map into this dialog. And now you can instantly see what we're doing. Now if you want to break this up some, what I do is add a layer, and then in the layer, I'm, I add like a noise, not a gradient. Then I go to shader, and I add a noise over the top of that. And I set that to function of lever. And then if I render that out again, you can see I've broken up the thing. You can adjust your, your map like normal, and it changes what area is actually being selected. Now this is only for the texturing. This is not doing this to the displacement. It's just doing it to the texture. So if now if I put this back on and I render it out, you can see we've broken up what is actually being shaded. All right, let's take a look at a little more complicated setup. And see, I added some animation to this one. But the setup's very similar to the previous one. Started out with a basic shape. In this case, it was a platonic. And I did a vertex selection of just the edges. Then I added subdivision surface to that just to smooth out my selection, give me a little more geometry to deform. Then I added two displacers on top of that to pull out my detail. Then I added another subdivision surface to that to smooth it, everything all out. Then I added two more displacers. And these displacers, I added a little bit of animation to the noise. I set the animation speed to one, 
set the loop period to 50. So if I play that back, you can kind of see that it's kind of dancing all around. Then I added one more subdivision surface, smooth it all out. And then finally, before I hit render, I added one more. You see, it just cleans up the mesh. But it slows the computer way down, so you don't want to actually have that turned on while you're playing with the animation. And if I play that back, you can see that the only part that deforms was our original selection. All of the base cage that was red doesn't move. And of course, you could use the same setup I did before to texture map this. Alright guys, that's it for this week. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and follow the blog at workbench.tv. I'm Sev, and we'll see you next week.